mentioned, uh, Tangi, about uh, the um, potential prognostic implications of, of some of the things that you're talking about. Victor, let me turn to you and ask, um, what are some of the prognostic factors that you think about and do they influence your management? Well, I think um, we talk about virus um, and how it's associated with the cancer development and uh, something we really should keep in mind that you, you could have a virus uh, that causes cancer, but you could also smoke. And that's certainly something that is different in the US than it is in Europe, because in Europe we still have a higher fraction of people smoking. And so you have more, uh, more uh, combinations. And uh, um, something that uh, I think we also have to put into the equation is the exposure to toxins um, such as tobacco, because that eats up your benefit that you will derive from a uh, virus-associated cancer. And so, um, so we, we group into HPV positive and negative, but um, to be frank, we have to be more precise in terms of other uh, um, um, toxic events that may lead to cancer, and so tobacco is one of, of those, actually. And, uh, in fact, I would like to second Victor's comment that I think tobacco changes the risk profile of these HPV positive tumors. I always say that HPV doesn't, prevent, uh, doesn't help you, uh, you know, avoid the toxic effect from smoking. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, I mean, even in the US and Chicago, at least 50% of the HPV positive tumors still occur in smokers. So some people think it's maybe a cofactor. Let me dwell on that point for, for a minute because we have a nice uh, distribution of, of European oncologists and, and, and North American oncologists. And tell me about what you're seeing with respect to HPV positive incidence of head and neck cancer, uh, Victor and Kevin. Maybe, Victor, you can start. Are you, are you, are you beginning yeah. to see these patients? Yeah, yes, we do. And there's an increase over time. There just has been a recent publication on that topic, actually, um, coming from Berlin. Um, but, um, but still, it's, it's not at the same magnitude as we uh, see it uh, to be uh, the, the fact, actually, in, in the U.S. So I think it's up to 80 percent, isn't it, of oropharyngeal cancer. And uh, it's far less in, in, in Europe. So um, um, we have same effects or similar effects, um, but the magnitude is, is not the same, actually. And uh, Kevin, are you, are you see, what are you seeing in your well, clinics? Well, in, I think in much the same way as, uh, as in other parts of life, including the recent Brexit vote, you can see that the UK is not necessarily <laughs> completely in step with the rest <laughs> of Europe. And what we have seen, actually, and has been published only last month in Cancer Research by Terry Jones and colleagues, is we conducted a nationwide survey representing all the four constituent countries of the United Kingdom. And we demonstrated, in fact, that the rate of HPV infection in oropharyngeal cancer is now about 50%. But what we showed and which surprised us significantly was no change over a 10-year period when we looked at um, a decade-wide change. And moreover, what we showed is a doubling of HPV negative oropharyngeal carcinoma in the United Kingdom as well. So I suspect that we may see similar patterns in other countries, but for now, the UK is not necessarily identical to the data being uh, shown in the rest of Europe. Very interesting. And, and Tangi, I know you've, you've done uh, a lot of work on around uh, HPV. And uh, tell us, uh, give us a snapshot of what's going on in North America and especially the United States. Um, I think in the United States, we are seeing this very marked increase in the incidence of HPV positive tumors in the oropharynx. Um, some HPV positive tumors occur also outside the oropharynx, although they're much less common. Um, I think the rate of projected increase will continue for at least another 15, 20 years. So I think, uh, at least in the US, that rate is increasing. But maybe mirroring what Kevin said, when you actually look geographically, and I'm not sure that there is very good data, but there are geographic differences where it seems like in certain areas, especially on the coasts, there is more incidence of HPV positive tumors, uh, and they're somewhat less in, 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 in the middle of the country. But I think um, everywhere you're starting to see this increase. So for us, for an oropharyngeal tumor, probably 70%, uh, maybe up to 80% of patients are now HPV positive.